Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to BC's Multiculturalism and Anti-Racism Awards. My name is Hassan Alam, and I'm a member of the province's Multicultural Advisory Council, which provides advice to the provincial government on issues related to multiculturalism and anti-racism. I'm excited to be your MC for today's award ceremony, and I'm joining you today from the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, which includes the territories of the Musqueam, the Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish, and Stolo nations. I'm grateful to the Indigenous stewards of these lands for the opportunity to live on this land. As a part of this land acknowledgement, I invite myself first and all of you to reflect and learn about the history of the Indigenous territories in which you are situated and the colonization, displacement, and marginalization of Indigenous peoples which has taken place there. I'm honored to be part of this event to recognize the inspiring and important work that's being done across BC to make this a more just, equitable, and inclusive province. Joining us today is Premier John Horgan, Attorney General David Eby, and Parliamentary Secretary for Anti-Racism Initiatives, Rajna Singh. We will have the Lakongwan dancers performing for us later in the show, and we'll be hearing from our five award recipients who we're all excited to hear from. To begin, I'd like to introduce Florence Dick and Darwin Seaweed from the Songhees First Nation to welcome us to this event. It's a very big honor to include and do proper territorial acknowledgements of the Indigenous people of the land. I am Florence Dick. My Indian name is Naamtanat. I come from the Songhees First Nations and been doing territorial welcomes proudly for over nine years. And it's an honor to be at this stage level, doing the welcome with my grandson and educating people how we do reinter all our teachings onto our children. And I've done this with my grandson, Darwin Seaweed. He does the territorial welcome and I ground people to the land of which the awards would have been at. And I'm so grateful to have this and share this knowledge with my grandson and how you would seen it visually is a blanket ceremony, the blanket ceremony which protects him, covers his heart, which you'll see the blanket on him. The headband you see is actually the headband that protects the words that come out of his mouth. It's an honor and a tradition that's always been in place throughout any ceremonial event that we do as Indigenous people. And the little pouch acknowledges the connection we have in this event for today. Hello everyone, my name is Darwin Seaweed. My Indian name is called Simit. I am with the Songhees First Nations. I am here to do a tutorial Territorial welcome in our language. Hayech Kasiyam. Asiyam Nechelacha. Asa Kalsime. Hayech Kagwenz Natecho Hilo. Etu Thlanathta. Hayech Kasiyam. Gwenz Natecho Tianuk. Thank you, everyone. That is a territorial welcome in our Lekwungen language that I taught my grandson. It's always important to acknowledge the ancestors of the land and educating the people about territorial acknowledgements is so important to the indigenous people. It brings back the strength that we need to be where we are at today and acknowledging that we are not gone, we're here and we'll always be here. 
when we hand down teachings, which means the future. I've included my grandson there to be the future voice of our people and he'll always will be here. I'm the present to remind people we've never went anywhere. We're always gonna be here. Thank you, Darwin and Florence, for such a beautiful start to the event and for that territorial acknowledgement. It's truly a privilege to have you with us here today. Um, now I would like to welcome Premier John Horgan to say a few words about what these awards mean. Thank you very much. And, and I want to also uh, acknowledge that I am coming to you with my colleague Rashna Singh and uh, Attorney General David Eby from the traditional territory of the Lekongan speaking people, the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nation. And I want to thank uh, Florence Dick and Darwin Seaweed for getting us started in a good way and acknowledge Florence uh, how important it is uh, to be passing on as a knowledge keeper, passing on your learnings over your lifetime uh, to Darwin and other young people as they come forward. It's truly an inspiration to all of us. Yesterday, I was with uh, the Cascadene uh, in Vancouver and hearing the stories about uh, Dene territory and, and the, 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 the sentence that stuck with me was, we're still here, we'll always be here. And of course that rings so true uh, here on Lekongan territory where I grew up and have the honor to uh, live in the territory of the Sauk and the Chianu and the uh, Nichalna uh, peoples uh, in uh, Pichidat territory uh, in Port Renfrew. So it is a great day to welcome everyone as we, uh, as we tune in to talk about the celebrations that are before us. Uh, of course, we're marking the International Day of the Elimination of Racism, and there is no better way to do that than by recognizing those that are leading the way. Today's awards honor anti-racism champions from around British Columbia. As community leaders, they exemplify the best of British Columbia. Through their actions, we see what it means to build a stronger province, one that is welcoming, just, and equitable for everyone. That's our shared vision, but systemic racism and discrimination remain an ugly reality, especially with Indigenous and racialized communities. As we come through the global pandemic, we're reminded of the harshness that many Asian Canadians were felt, met with as COVID had its grip on our community. And although it, were, it, were a tragic, it was a tragic moment in our history, it was also a defining moment. And citizens of all backgrounds stood together and spoke with one voice and said, there is no room for racism in British Columbia. We are dealing with a global pandemic and only if we deal with it together, wherever we may have come from, to come to these indigenous territories, the only way we will come through this is if we work together. And we have much work to do. We started as government by reestablishing the BC Human Rights Commission. Resilience BC is a provincial anti-racism network that is now operating in over 40 communities. Soon, Indigenous-focused coursework will be a requirement for citizens or kids to graduate from BC high schools. And we're going to introduce new race-based data legislation in the spring session of the legislature so that we can continue to advance a better understanding of our communities and how important they all are. This will help us remove barriers to marginalized citizens and also make it easier to access services. Parliamentary Secretary Rashna Singh has been leading this work in close consultation with communities right across British Columbia. Anti-racism work is about listening and learning from one another, choosing compassion over division, especially when times are tough. As we've learned over the past two years, the times don't get tougher than what, what, what we've been through. And because we've been able to do this together, we're better off as a province. To the award recipients and nominees tonight, I say thank you. By celebrating multiculturalism and fighting against racism, you are making British Columbia a better place for everyone. And now I wanna turn it back to Hassan and I look forward to enjoying the rest of the program. Thank you, Premier. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. And thank you for the work that your government is doing. Over the last two years, the province has strengthened its commitment to fighting racism in BC. To lead this work, in November of 2020, Premier Horgan introduced Surrey Green Timbers MLA, Vashna Singh, as the first parliamentary secretary for anti-racism initiatives. Together, we'll be announcing the award recipients for today. 
and I'd like to extend a warm welcome to Parliamentary Secretary Rajna Singh to say a few words about what the provincial government is doing to tackle racism in this province. Thank you so much, Hassan, for the introduction. Uh, I am joining you today from the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking peoples of the Eskimalt and Songhees First Nations. We are grateful for the history, traditions, perspectives, and ways of life that are foundation of these lands and contribute to our strength and prosperity. Thank you, Florence Dick and Darwin Seaweed from the Songhees First Nation for your opening welcome to start our event in the right way. And I would also like to thank Premier Horgan uh, to make, uh, who made, just made some introductory remarks. I also want to recognize the members of the BC Multicultural Advisory Council who are joining us virtually, including Hassan, our MC for this evening. I would like to acknowledge all of the past award nominees as well as members of our Resilience BC Network. Thank you for all that you do to offer support, advice, and leadership on issues of diversity, inclusion, racial oppression, and discrimination. It's important to talk about why we are here today. The last two years have been incredibly challenging. The uncertainty of the pandemic has placed a significant strain on our health and well being. From losing jobs, family and friends to struggling with isolation, the impact of COVID-19 will be felt for many years to come. But for indigenous peoples and racialized communities, there's also been a staggering increase in racism as a result of the pandemic. The Office of the Human Rights Commissioner recently reported that more than a quarter of British Columbians had been victim of hatred or they witnessed it. Those numbers may be shocking for some, but for these communities, it's just another reminder of the daily barriers that they face in their lives. Now more than ever, we must celebrate diversity and recognize those who are fighting back against discrimination. Their efforts are helping to make BC a safer, more inclusive province for everyone. Each year, we come together for this event on March 21st marking the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. It is a chance to recognize and celebrate those who are strengthening our communities and leading anti-racism efforts across British Columbia. It is also a chance for us to see ourselves within the larger movement of change makers across the province who are taking on the call to stand against, stand against racism and hate. There is no place for hate in BC and we are committed to make this province where everyone is treated with kindness, respect, and dignity. One where no one faces discrimination in their daily lives or systemic barriers that stops them from getting ahead. Soon we will be introducing new legislation to support more consistent collection of personal information such as ethnic origin, ancestry, racial background, or religion. This legislation will help to address systemic racism and pave the way to a more equitable, inclusive province. It will also deliver better outcomes for those who rely on government programs and services such as healthcare, education, and policing. Let me give you a few examples of how this legislation may help. BC Housing has previously collected data about race and found that specific programming was not serving the marginalized populations. Using tangible data, they were able to adjust their, these programs to improve outcomes for those communities. Social programs such as rental assistance or the affordable childcare are another good example where we can improve access to these programs if data shows there are barriers for applying for, these, for some communities. We also know that this is a very complex issue and we must proceed cautiously and with care and understanding. That's why we have developed this legislation in consultation with the indigenous peoples and following extensive engagement with other racialized communities throughout our province. We will continue to work in partnership with the racialized communities to ensure that they are part of, these, part of the conversations around how their personal information is used. These conversations will be critical to deciding whether together what information should be collected and how that should be collected. 
this significant new legislation will, will build steps that we have taken over the past few years to address racism, including re-establishing the BC Human Rights Commission, launching Resilience BC, our provincial anti-racism network, updating BC's K-12 curriculum to reflect other histories and ways of learning. We know that these actions alone won't put an end to racism. We need to come together as a society to commit to being anti-racist and calling out discrimination when we see it. I hope that you are inspired by the stories of tonight's recipients and encouraged to take actions against racism, whatever that looks like for you. Now, without further ado, let's celebrate the people of our province who are standing up to racism and making BC an even better place to live, work, and play. And I'll, now I'll hand back things uh, to Hassan and uh, to start the show. Thank you, Parliamentary Secretary Singh, and thank you for all the incredible work that you're doing in your role. Um, as a member of the province's Multicultural Advisory Council, uh, I look forward to working with you and the provincial government to stamp out racism and systemic discrimination in all its forms and make this a more inclusive province for everyone who lives here. And as Parliamentary Singh said, it's uh, time for what we're all here for, the awards. <laughs> I will begin by outlining each of the categories and then Parliamentary Secretary Singh will share our honorable mentions before announcing our award recipients. Our first award of the evening is Intercultural Trust. There are two recipients of this award, which is provided to an outstanding organization or individual for their work in building intercultural trust and understanding and reducing racism and hate between communities. Over to you, Rashna. Uh, thank you again, Hassan, uh, for the Intercultural, intercultural Trust Award. Our two honorable mentions are Nisa Helpline from Surrey for providing free counseling for up to 800 Muslim women throughout North America through their confidential helpline. And Kitimat Truth and Reconciliation Committee for working with the Haisla Nation, the district of Kitimat and its resident to put together a month of activities for truth and reconciliation in September of 2021. Thank you to both these organizations for the incredible work that they are doing in their communities. And now it's time to announce our first award recipient of the day, Imtiaz Popert from Vancouver. Imtiaz is the co-founder of the Coalition Against Bigotry, Pacific, and the Community-Based Anti-Hate Task Force. He has been a vocal advocate for equal rights and social justice for many years and organized rallies to support the LGBTQS plus and other indigenous communities. Congratulations, Imtiaz, uh, and uh, please tell us a little bit more about your work and uh, what inspires you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Rajna Ji. You know, you, you told everybody the work I've been doing, but you know, it's been working many years to work with different cultural communities uh, to build that cultural trust against racism and bigotry. And this award means a lot uh, to carry on that work, right? To double our efforts because the work, is, work isn't done. So this will um, you know, in strength, empower us to carry on a struggle for equality. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Imtiaz Bhai, for sharing your story and your commitment to giving a voice to the underrepresented in our province and Canada more broadly. Our second recipient is the Stand with the Asian Coalition in Burnaby, represented by Doris Ma today. The organization is being, being recognized for its work to support victims of anti-Asian racism and hate crimes, bringing together cities from across the country last year to proclaim May 10 as Day of Action Against Anti-Asian Racism. They also partnered with the city of Burnaby to create a shoe memorial commemorating the 215 First Nations children who were found in unmarked graves at a formal residential school in Kamloops. These shoes were then donated to the First Nations partners to be provided to children in need. It's great to have you here, Doris. Please tell us more about what motivates your work. 
Good evening, distinguished guests, Premier John Horgan, Parliamentary Secretary Honorable Rajna Singh, Attorney General Honorable David Eby. My name is Doris Ma. I would like to also recognize that I'm joining this meeting from Ottawa, the unceded traditional territory of the Unconquered and the Shinabi people. I am the co-founder of the Sandwich Asians Coalition. On behalf of our board and our 2,500 Facebook group members, I want to sincerely thank the BC government for selecting Sandwich Asians Coalition as the recipient of the BC Multiculturalism and Anti-Racism Award in the category of Interracial Intercultural Trust. I would like to thank our nominator and our reference, Burnaby City Councillor James Wang, MP Peter Julian. Sandwich so Asians Coalition movement started only a year ago in April from my kitchen table after I read the hate crime in Burnaby increased by 350% since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Vancouver saw 700% increase. Few of us came together really quickly to form this coalition because we felt that something got to be done to tackle racism. Many hours went into uniting cities across the country to proclaim May 10 last year as a day of action against anti-Asian racism in acknowledging the urgent need to develop more effective policy initiatives and systemic change to protect all Canadians. Well, I would like to thank many grassroots activists across Canada who worked tirelessly to obtain these proclamations from their cities. 8.7 million Canadians were behind our movement last year. Well, this year, we're calling all Canadians to join our movement to fight against all forms of racism, hate, and discrimination so that we can build a stronger, more inclusive society where everyone can feel safe, happy, and healthy. Thank you very much. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, we are now going to welcome the Lekwungwan dancers for a special performance. Since 1978, the dancers have been performing and sharing their songs at schools, festivals, parades, and other events throughout BC. The trope spans multiple generations and includes dancers as young as three, as well as members who've been dancing since the group started. It is an honor to have them here to perform for us today. Please join me in welcoming them to the event.
thank you to uh, the Lekwungen dancers for that amazing performance. Again, we were so lucky and fortunate to have you here today and blessed and for you to bless us with that performance. Um, next is our Breaking Barriers Award. Uh, this is given to individuals or organizations who are tackling systemic or institutional racism and reducing barriers for marginalized communities. There are two awards presented for this category, and I'm going to pass it to Parliamentary Russia Singh to talk about these awards and categories. Thank you, Hassan. And for our Breaking Barriers Awards, we have three honorable mentions. Nina Charlie from Lady Smith for helping to organize the first Black Lives Matter rally in Nanaimo in June of 2020, as well as sharing her own experiences with racism to educate others. Stephen No from Burnaby for his advocacy for improvements to the reporting of hate crimes in Vancouver, as well as his work to promote equity for Asian legal professionals and the community more broadly and Navjot Jassal from Victoria for developing a program while studying at UVic to provide training and feedback in litigation skills for racialized law students. Thank you all of you for, doing, uh, for what you are doing to break down barriers and support communities that are impacted by racism. And now for our awards re recipients, first we have Amy Shelley Fu from Nanaimo. For more than 25 years, Amy has supported indigenous and marginalized communities, including street, street entrenched youth and the LGBTQS plus population to find housing, access education and find work. Over the years, she has also worked with many residential school survivors, helping them reconnect to their culture and language and find safe housing. Welcome Amy, and please tell us a little bit more about your work and what this awards means for you. Thank you. Um, Amy Natsigason Omania Nawehiwen Shalafu, Edmonton, Alberta, Ochinia, Magamigwich, Nanaimo, Niwakin. My name is Amy. My birth name is Shalafu. I am from Edmonton, Alberta. I now live in Nanaimo, and I'm very grateful to live, learn, and work on the lands of the Sinemach, Sanawis, Suminis First Nation, and the home of the Mid Island Metis. My journey began with the loss of my daughter. It was all to honor her. My family used to say it was my grief that drove me, and they were right. Missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit go missing still at an unacceptable rate, and their loved ones are left to grieve. In my work supporting women, other grieving families would cross my path. I started sharing my story. Soon it became easier to share the rest of my story through storytelling and poetry. My work continued to bring me to lives parallel to my own, People who had fallen through the cracks of foster care, LGBTQS, addiction and mental health, cultural and identity loss. An interwoven web of marginalization due to racism, hate crimes, and exploitation of Indigenous women and youth can't be undone. Though awareness of what the impact of residential school and how it has affected how we are seen is not only imperative, our lives depend on it. The Highway of Tears is not an urban legend. My work in the North with Indigenous youth showed me the scary connection with predatory and criminal behavior against Indigenous people and how it ran all the way to Vancouver Island. And our kindness has been poisoned with desensitization. We turn the channel, we cross the street, and we think of something else when we hear of the hate crimes. As one person, I can't do this work alone. However, with the support of so many organizations behind me, I can bring language and culture to those who cannot access it. I can bring food to the ones denied entry to most places. And I can ask my community to help everyone access safe supply, treatment beds, detox, crisis intervention, dignified medical treatment for BIPOC and for youth. It's the collaborative efforts of all the teams I have the honor of working with that help it become a reality. And all of these things were born from grassroots people thousands of individuals with dreams of bringing safety to their community. And by talking about what is really going on out there, we give voice to those too scared to report the crimes against them. Grassroots podcasts, radio, poetry, and storytelling events are giving, them a plat are giving a platform for the voices that have been kept quiet. Literacy is providing the means to write it and to give access to education. 
Every year, once more, more once silent voices are given a platform. They will be our neighbors, our teachers, and our poets. And I'm grateful I can help them get there. To the ones who nominated me, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have given me a platform to help my community because you believe in this work as well. And I share this moment with you all. Hi, hi, Kinanis Komotina. Thank you so much, Amy, for your inspiring work. And uh, I would again like to congratulate you on your award today. Our second award goes to the Kamloops mm -hmm. African Society represented today by Sally Martin. The Kamloops African Society works to support and include people of color through mentorship, community engagement, and cultural promotion. In February 2021, the organization held the first ever Black History Commemoration in Kamloops. This event gave the opportunity, the chance to share stories, promote their diverse culture, and, and hear guest speakers to, talk, to talk about a range of issues, including mental health and financial literacy. Thank you for joining us, Sally. And please tell us a little bit more about what motivates your work. Thank you, P.S. Singh. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I'd like to greet you all, Honorable John, and um, distinguished guests here today. I would like to acknowledge the lands of where I sit and speak from today, of the Kamloops Shikwapmik uh, people, and seated traditional territory of the Shkwapmik people. After experiencing hard times, uh, just because of the color of my skin, I was motivated um, to start and create a platform that could provide a safe space for all cultures to come and share their issues of racism. Um, my experiences not only have shaped and created this, but also the experiences of those that continually go through the hard and the harm that is inflicted by racism. I am so honored and humbled today to be the recipient of the Multiculturalism and Anti-Racism Award. It means so much, not just to myself, but also the community of color and the young BIPOC women that have been part of the work that we were doing. This award and initiative represents hope and the idea that it is possible because there's progress being made. Thank you so much to the government of BC, the province of BC, sorry, for recognizing the steps that are being made towards the right direction and inspiring more actionable change in individuals and organizations. I am so grateful to the people that nominated us, myself, but more so to individuals and organizations that have accepted and started the work of addressing the deep-seated issues of racism and discrimination. For we can't treat that which we can't see nor identify, because admitting this a problem will create better solutions. Our common humanity should be the great equalizer and reminder that we're all one race, the human race. And therefore, all of you, I want to leave you with a spirit of Ubuntu, the spirit of oneness. Umuntu, ngumuntu, ngabantu, meaning I am because you are. And I hope that we get there together. Thank you. Thank you, Sally, uh, for your dedication to make, make your community a more inclusive and welcoming place for everyone. Thank you so much. Now, before we introduce our last finalist, Hassan will take a moment to tell us about the award. Yes, congratulations, um, Sally and Amy. Uh, and thank you for all the important work that you're doing. Uh, Amy, as you so powerfully put it, uh, this is work that shouldn't fall on any one individual. It's work that needs to be done collectively by all of us. And Sally, thank you for reminding us of the oneness of, of our communities. Um, 
Our last category is the Emerging Leader Award. This is given to an outstanding individual 15 to 30 years of age for their work in building intercultural trust, tackling racism, or reducing barriers for marginalized communities. And I will now hand it back to uh, Parliamentary Singh to uh, announce our winners. Thank you again, Hassan. Uh, let's start uh, with the honorable mention for our last category. Ronia Skahin from Victoria, nominated for working to include more diverse voices and representation, as well as to improve racial and intersectional safety for students in school district 61. Thank you so much for all your incredible work to make our schools safer for students and all walks of life. And this year's Emerging Leader, goes, uh, Leader Award goes to Dr. Rahel Zubede from Vancouver. Dr. Rahel is the founder and president of the Black Physicians of BC, a nonprofit society that provides a community of support for Black physicians and medical trainees throughout the province. Through her work at UBC, she has also advocated for an institutional anti-racism policy that led to change to the undergraduate medical curriculum. And we supported more equitable, diverse, and inclusive hiring practices. Welcome, Dr. Rahel. Thank you very much, um, MP Singh, and good, ev good evening, everyone. Um, coming from Vancouver, from uh, the unceded territories of the Meskiam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. Uh, thank you very much to the government of British Columbia for honoring me with the Emerging Leader Award. I founded Black Physicians of British Columbia during my first year in the province after experiencing how institutionalized racism has contributed to the marked scarcity of Black physicians and trainees and how it has impacted the care provided to Black patients. I would like to, to take this opportunity to thank the board members and advisors of Black Physicians of British Columbia. It is only through our collective effort and energy that we've been able to bring structural changes in BC's medical training and healthcare system within a short time. And I also want to extend a special gratitude to Dr. Regina Oglevy and Dr. Ruth Hafte for uh, their nomination to this award. Uh, and for their constant support and guidance in my leadership and advocacy work. I like to share one of my favorite quotes from Audre Lorde um, that echoes the power of community and advocacy. So Audre Lorde says, without community, there is no liberation. I'm grateful to have built a community of Black physicians, medical students, and residents that will sustain the work of tackling institutionalized racism and advocating for Black patients as well as physicians and mentoring young Black students. I'm incredibly honored to be recognized for this work. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rahel, for doing so much to lift others in your community and congratulations on your award. The recipient of the Emerging Leader Award also receives a $5,000 grant to be donated to a nonprofit of their choice. And this year, Dr. Zuvude is donating the grant to the Black Physicians of British Columbia. For this year, we received more than 100 individual nominees for the awards and each one deserving a recognition in their own right. Their ongoing commitment to support those impacted by racism and to foster diversity and inclusivity serves an inspiration for us all. Thank you for all that you do. Your work is making a difference every day. I would also like to thank all of the other individuals, organizations and volunteers throughout British Columbia who are furthering this work. We are stronger in our fight against racism with your, because you are standing along with us. Before we close, I would also like to thank everyone involved in putting on these awards. And I would now like to welcome Hassan for our closing remarks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Parliamentary Secretary Singh. Uh, and congratulations again to all of our recipients. Um, and thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, I'm grateful to everyone who joined us today, to Premier Horgan uh, and P.S. Singh, Florence Dick, Darwin Seaweed, the Lekwungwan uh, Nation and our award recipients. Um, these awards are an important opportunity for us to come together as a province in order to recognize 
the individuals from these communities who are engaged in this important and vital work. But we know that there's more work to do. From the tragic killing of George Floyd to the alarming rise in anti-Asian racism, during the past two years, we've been harshly reminded that systemic racism is something that continues to plague our communities and is something that must be continuously acknowledged and confronted. Despite these challenges, communities of color have been resilient and have mobilized to fight racism and dismantle systemic barriers that we face in order to create a more just and equitable society. Ultimately though, we dream of a day where there's no longer a need to recognize individuals who are engaged in fighting racism because we live in a society where everyone, regardless of color, are viewed as being equal. In closing, I hope you join me in not only imagining this future, but also fighting for it. To everyone watching at home, I hope that you're inspired by the stories you've heard today, because I am. And that these champions of anti-racism motivate you to stand against discrimination and hatred too. As we say goodbye, I'd like to welcome Attorney General David Eby to provide some final remarks before we close. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Hassan, and congratulations to all our champions of anti-racism on your awards and your amazing work and your compelling remarks uh, during this ceremony. Throughout the pandemic, our province has seen a really disturbing rise in discrimination and hatred. We've seen physical and verbal attacks, vandalism and racist graffiti, racialized communities who have been targeted for their race, people targeted for their ethnicity, their faith, or simply the color of their skin. As a government, we're committed to fighting this racism in all its forms, but we can't do it alone. That's why it's so nice to have a hopeful event like this to recognize champions fighting racism in our province. But it's not just our award winners tonight. There are so many individuals and organizations across the province that are supporting those affected by racism, that are changing systems for the better and bringing people together to celebrate our diverse communities. You and they are inspirational examples of how we should treat each other with kindness, dignity, and respect. I encourage everyone in the province to join together to fight against racism. It's time to commit to be anti-racist and to have important conversations together. We must do more to challenge the status quo, to speak out when we see examples of racism and fundamentally shift our institutions so that everyone can be included. By working together, we can build a more inclusive and welcoming province. Congratulations again to all of the nominees and to the recipients of the awards for your wonderful work. Thank you.